Evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. I'm Nick Toma. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hundreds of state liners are posting, tagging, and tweeting their way right into the eyes of local police. Eyewitness News anchor Christy Nix joins us with a look at the growing phenomenon of online posts. Nick and Mimi in Freeport, a city just over 25,000, social media has generated weekly calls to the police department. Some simply Facebook drama, others serious offenses. Now police are fighting fire with fire as I investigate the state line's problem with social media crime. It's easy to be a tough guy tapping on a keyboard, but when somebody shows up at your front door, then it's a whole different ballgame. From post to police, more than 200 calls in one year to Freeport police alone. All of them linked to Facebook. And Freeport Police Lieutenant Albert Marney says those numbers will only continue to climb. It creates a, a higher level of human interaction in society, and anything that does that uh, is likely to increase the number of incidents in which police intervention would be required. On average, Lieutenant Marney says his department responds to one or more calls a week. That started with a click of the mouse and in some cases escalated to much more. I issued a warrant on someone, a man for domestic battery, who went to the house of his ex-girlfriend and battered her because she posted a new status on Facebook that said she was single. Freeport police also arresting Kyle Heaster after a woman had two of her tires damaged only to be taunted about it by Heaster over Facebook. Nationally, scenes like this one unfolding at a park in Birmingham, Alabama, where a Facebook fight three weeks in the making ended with a 14-year-old girl shot to death. And in Loves Park, the case of 21-year-old William Beagle, who's accused of hacking into the Facebook account of 15-year-old Megan Schultz after she died from a brain defect. Beagle then allegedly used Schultz's Facebook page to accuse a relative of sexually assaulting her. You know, it was a real sad case. And we ended up uh, using social media to help track where he was at down in Florida. And that's the catch-22 confronting Loves Park Police Chief Rodney Scott. Like Freeport, Loves Park is inundated with calls that started online. But Chief Scott says Facebook and Twitter can be valuable crime-fighting tools as well. We're finding a lot of tips are coming in through social media on information we're putting out on our Facebook page and our Twitter site. The department posting everything from the latest arrest, like the mug of a man accused of stealing from a clothing store, to tweeting about new technology to the department, like these body cameras, reaching 50 to 60,000 views per week on average. Over here we have our, our Twitter and our Facebook page linked to our website. Now Loves Park Police say because of the success of their social media sites, the department is creating an app set to debut by the end of this year. We do stand out when it comes to, to technology here in Loves Park and trying to engage the community, um, looking at you know different ways to do so because ultimately we need their help to do our job. And for those looking to make their job more difficult because of social media. If you don't like the channel you're watching on TV, then change the channel. If you don't like what you're looking at on Facebook, then don't look at it. And while police can't dig into every single call that stems from social media drama, Lieutenant Marty wants everyone to know there are a few Facebook don'ts that prompt immediate police action. Those include bomb threats, threats of violence, and any.